Kitaria Fables. This cute game is being released in the midst of the Tales of Arise hype and Gamescom announcement, so it's very, very possible that it could fly on your radar, and I am here today to change that. Kitaria Fables is a game that combines farming simulation together with real time combat that uses skills and magic. Sounds familiar? It shouldn't come as a surprise, but the Rune Factory series is in fact one of Kitaria's biggest inspirations. And with Rune Factory 5 being delayed until 2022, this may just be the game that you are looking for. In this video review, I will show and tell you everything that you want to know, and if you still have any questions by the end of it, just drop a comment and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you want to stay up to date with the latest niche and Japanese games, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon to not miss anything. Now without further ado, let's get started. Welcome to Paw Village, a cozy little town with cute animals. Years ago this place was constantly under attack by monsters during a dark event called the Calamity. A brave hero defeated the head honcho and stopped it which led to a prolonged era of peace. And what do you do when there is peace? That's right, you do not fight. You start to spend your days relaxing, hanging out with friends, binging Netflix shows, and before you know it you have a full generation of people, or animals in this case, that do not know how to handle a sword and it just so happens that more and more monsters are showing up. And that, my dudes, is where you come in. Enter Nianza von Whiskers and his loyal sidekick Macaron, who is mostly there to act as a voice for your voiceless protagonist. Both Nyanza and Macaron have been sent by the capital to protect Paw Village against the rising dangers. Upon your arrival you receive a warm welcome and are shown to a house with a piece of farmland, which unsurprisingly belonged to your deceased grandfather. From the get-go this farm is yours to keep and maintain. Any time not spent fighting monsters will be spent right here as your crops are very important to your progression. You need crops to complete quests, sell them for money and create food to recover health. I will talk more about the feel for the progression and the required money for it later in the video, but for now let's take a deeper look at the farming itself. As with most farming simulation games, the farming gameplay consists of 5 steps. First is to clear any obstructions such as rocks and wood from the field. Second is to till the soil with a hoe. Once that's done you can plant your seeds, which is a quick and easy process in Kitaria as you can plant 9 seeds at once. Step number 4 is to water your plants every day and secretly hope it's going to rain so you can skip having to do this. And finally number 5, once the crops are done growing you have to harvest them. And that's really all there is to it. The developers have kept the farming simulation element both easy and accessible. To give some examples, there are no seasons to keep in mind where you need to plant specific crops, there are no diseases that your plants can get, there is no way to improve the yield or quality of your plants, every one seed will end up as one result. Result. Easy as that. So your house and farmland are located in Paw Village, which is also inhabited by a number of villagers. You talk to them quite often as they either have quests for you or offer certain services such as selling seeds, cooking food and creating weapons and armor. The town also has some mining nodes, trees to chop and a special vendor at night and some hidden chests. But other than that there is not much to do in Paw Village. The townsfolk don't change and outside of their quests and services you don't really interact with them. Kitaria Fables was heavily inspired by titles such as Rune Factory, Story of Seasons and Stardew Valley. And if you are familiar with those games you know that a big part of the experience comes from bonding with the different characters. Kitaria Fables doesn't have that, which doesn't have to be a problem unless it's something that you are specifically looking for in these types of games. Now what Kitaria Fables does have is a bunch of explorable lands, dungeons and real time combat. This is the most enjoyable part of the game honestly and clearly where the developers have put most of their focus on. In terms of fighting styles you can use a sword, you can use a bow and you can cast magic spells. But the cool thing is that you can use everything at once. You see Kitaria Fables doesn't have classes or stat requirements so all you have to do is equip what you want to use and then use it. When it comes to magic, the damage your spells deal scale of your sword and bow, so whenever you get a weapon upgrade your magic damage automatically increases too. You can't just keep spamming skills though as they each have a cooldown and also use mana, but you can replenish your mana quickly by using normal attacks. 
The way they've done this feels good as there doesn't have to be any downtime while fighting. You can just go in with some attacks, use a special skill, attack a little bit more and then use more skills. And the skills themselves are just more than a stronger jab or shooting a fireball. They are big, they are colorful and you can feel the impact that they have. My favorite skill throughout the game is called Earth Blades, which is like you're shooting a chainsaw at the enemies that drags them with it and just keeps on going and going. I also like how you can just push and toss enemies around with your attacks as this makes you, the player, actually feel the impact. But when it comes to bosses, this can be a bit detrimental. In terms of being pushed around or inflicting status ailments like stuns, bosses are just like regular enemies but with 50 times the amount of HP. In order to defeat them you need to keep wailing and wailing on them which means there will be a lot of pushing going on. In open areas this is fine but when it comes to dungeons and caves this can become inconvenient and sometimes the boss would even get stuck in a wall for me. Other than that you can only equip a total of 4 skills at a time which is not enough. There are two weapon times and four different magic elements and if you add all the different skills together you get a total of 30 different skills you can use. The skills you bring can only be selected in towns. So whenever I would head out to fight monsters, especially later in the game, I just felt limited in my options as there were a lot of fun and useful skills that I wanted to try out together. That said, overall I really like the combat. Just like the farming simulation element, it's pretty basic in terms of its complexity and depth, but I think that's perfect for a game that is supposed to be a casual and cozy experience. So whereas other farming simulation games tend to somewhat limit your freedom with a stamina and bedtime system, which, you know, does make it a bit more realistic, Guitaria Fables doesn't do this at all. Outside of combat, there is no overarching stamina bar that you need to keep in mind, and no matter how long you stay awake, the main character is more than fine. I've actually gone through a few grinding sessions where I was killing monsters for materials for multiple days straight and nothing bad happened. And with this in mind, how you spend your day is entirely up to you, but the game does subtly promote a certain gameplay loop which is as follows. No matter what time you go to bed, you always wake up at 7am. Once you step outside of your house, you tend to your farm, whether it's planting seeds, watering plants or harvesting them. Any extra crops you have can be sold via the shipping bin next to your house and you will receive the money a day later. After you're done on the farm, you head into town, get your essentials and then move out to clear quests or explore and fight monsters. When the night falls, certain monsters will be replaced by others, such as bats or ghosts. These aren't particularly strong or anything, but they do drop different items. Once you're done for the day, you can head back home. Any extra monster materials you want to sell, you can put them in a shipping bin and then you can go to sleep. Rinse and repeat. The variety in your gameplay experience mainly comes from fighting different monsters, growing different crops and doing different quests. The most fun parts for me were the times where you get access to a new zone or dungeon and generally every time the story progresses a little bit. But it is the very same progression that is actually my biggest issue with this game. So as you can see in the thumbnail I have played Kitaria Fables for 32 hours, which is the total time it took for me to clear both the story and all side content. And while I generally had a good time, there was one big section of the game which felt weird and I will do my best to explain it without spoilers. So when you start the game there's a good mixture of story progression, new areas to explore and side quests to complete. But after about 5 hours of playtime that suddenly stops when you get a quest to repair a broken bridge to move to the next area. Getting the materials for this requires you to fight certain monsters which are quite a bit stronger than what you've been fighting so far. So in order to defeat those efficiently you will need to upgrade your weapons and armor up to 3 times. Essentially this means that you will be grinding monsters to repair the bridge, upgrade your sword 3 times, upgrade your bow 3 times, upgrade your armor 3 times, craft a hat and craft accessories. Considering that the weapons and armor can only be upgraded a total of 5 times in a full 32 hour game, you can imagine how big this grind suddenly is and simultaneously it costs a lot of money that you have to earn through selling your farm crops. Looking back at my footage I spent almost 8 hours on this part alone which is a significant chunk of the playtime. 
Once you get through this part, however, everything is back in balance. The story progression starts to pick up again, new side quests will appear, and you get to experience new zones and dungeons. And even though it took a long time just fighting and farming crops, the reward for it is really satisfying. Going from 120 to 450 health points, dealing up to 4 times more damage and having access to about 15 new spells is such a big game changer. Everything felt fresh again and its freshness continued through the very end of the story. Now don't get me wrong by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with a little grind in the game, especially when there is no rush and you can take your time to explore everything at your own leisure, but seeing as there was nothing else to do, it felt like a big roadblock that you have to get through before things get fun again. I think it would have been a better experience if the upgrades and progression were more gradual and in sync with the story and side quests all the way through the game. Now while Guitaria Fables doesn't have online co-op, it does support couch co-op and steamed remote play feature, and it is actually really good. The second player acts as your sidekick and experiences everything at the same time as you do. It works like a drop in and drop out system, so player 1 can play the game by themselves and whenever player 2 wants to join, all they have to do is plug in a second controller. Player 1 and Player 2 share everything, from the farming land to money to items, equipment and usable skills. This does mean that you will need an extra set of weapons and armor though. In co-op, monsters are buffed and take longer to kill as a result. Finding together is fun, but if one player uses attacks that have pushbacks, it can get mildly annoying for the other player. But honestly, when we play together, we use it to have a little bit of banter going on. If you fall in battle during solo play, you get transported to your house and wake up the next day. But if you fall during co-op, the other player will have to defend the fallen player until they recover. Again, Kitaria Fables only supports local co-op, but if you play it via Steam, it is supported by the online remote play feature in which one person needs to own the game and they can invite a friend via the friends list. I haven't had the chance to try this as I've only played the game on the PlayStation 5, but my past experience with Steam's remote play have been good so far. And with that said, I think it's time that we move on to my final thoughts. Fun, cute, cozy, accessible and wholesome. These are the 5 words I would use to describe Guitaria Fables because overall it has just been a pleasant experience. The game is developed by Twin Hearts which consists of just 3 people and seeing as this is their first game I think they have done a terrific job. One thing that does sadden me a bit is that it feels like the developers had more in mind to provide an experience closer to Rune Factory, but for reasons I don't know these didn't make the cut. For instance, there are a bunch of entry points to dungeons that you cannot enter. I mean, this one even has a bridge leading towards it. Furthermore, back in the early days of its development, when this game was still called Paw Heroes, there were developer updates that showed crafting and building relationships with other villagers. Even in the story there are mentions of certain things that you would expect to appear but never happened. Despite these signs of not fully being what the developers may have envisioned, the core game does feel polished. Aside from that one boss that I pushed into the wall, I didn't encounter a single bug and the controls for both the farming and combat overall feel good. So yeah, while the game does draw inspiration from Rune Factory and delivers with fun and simplified farming and combat systems, you have to keep in mind that there is no relationship building going on and that the town doesn't feel alive because there are no villagers moving around. In return, you do get the option of experiencing the game in co-op, which I think is a great addition. When the story ends, however, you're pretty much done with the game. Sure, you can still roam around and refight bosses, maybe finish up some side quests, but there won't be anything new to pursue or complete. For a $20 game, I think Guitaria Fables delivers good value and I'd love to see the game do well and what the developers will bring us in the future. But that is my opinion and I'm always curious to hear about yours. What kind of things do you expect from a game like this? Do you think they delivered on that after watching my review? And if not, what would you like to see differently in Guitaria Fables? Let me know in the comments down below and we'll talk about it. And with that being said, I want to thank you all so much for watching and until next time.